Craig, quantum theory is the foundations of modern physics. Uh, it's very strange to our common perceptions, so I really need to understand what it is, what the strange parts are, and how we can possibly explain it. Quantum mechanics was uh, discovered really in 1925, and just a short time afterward, it, it had, people started to notice all the counter, counterintuitive and really strange, weird, uh, almost paradoxical results that, that, that came from it. And people have this formalism, which they knew how to apply in the lab, but what did it mean? What did it, what did it say about the world? What did it say was going on? So what are some of these strange things that quantum mechanics confronts us with? Well, one of the weirdest things is, uh, and most interesting to me, is quantum non-locality. That the state of some particle, uh, very, very far away, can be correlated with the state of some other particle that, that it's never interacted with. And so there's... And, it, and there's no time to... There's, there's to, not enough time for the influence to come from one <laughs> to the other. So it seems like this kind of pre-established harmony almost between the different particles. Another puzzle is uh, this uh, measurement problem. If you think of this, the theory is, suppose you had a, a, a particle and it had a certain property, say uh, spin, which is one of the quantum particle properties. And I set, set it up so that if it goes through this magnet, if it goes up, then there'll be a macroscopic pointer and it'll point up. And if it goes down, then there'll be this macroscopic pointer and it'll point down. So we'll pretend it's a perfectly reliable measurement. Well, quantum mechanics will allow this, but it also allows for what they call the superposition of the two, which is a state where if it's up, it, uh, it'll do that, and if it's down, it'll do that. Not and, or, and. It's and. Both, and. It's both, yeah, not or, not, exactly, not or, and. It's, it's a state of both. Well, what does that mean? Is it, it, you know, when we see it, we see the pointer either this way or this way, but, this, but the equations tell us that it's, a state, that it's in both. How can it be in both where you see only one? And so there are all these recipes for trying to answer this question. And so in the Copenhagen interpretation that Bohr invented, he thought that it was actually the act of measurement itself that we, or maybe just, maybe not we exactly, but big things, classical things, when they interact with tiny things, send that and to an or and collapse the state of the system into either the pointer up or the pointer So if you don't like the Copenhagen interpretation, the idea that human beings and the act of observation matter to the universe, then there are different re recipes for trying to deal with this. And they essentially boil down to three, three types of recipes. One is a kind of many worlds theory due to Hugh Everett, uh, where you posit all these different worlds. Another is a realistic collapse theory, where you posit some new phys physical mechanism that's going to collapse the state to either one with a pointer up or pointer down. And then another theory which says quantum mechanics is incomplete, and it adds to the theory, uh, what are sometimes called hidden variables, that choose, that fill in the pointer up or the pointer down, but not both. And so you have a choice then among these three. Right now, so how, how, how does each work? The, the many worlds theory say that at that, at that and situation, it's not, it's not and at the same point, each one branches into a separate world, which yields to incalculable numbers of separate worlds and separate yous and me's doing all sorts of things. I mean, it's, a, it's an extraordinarily extravagant theory, but a lot of physicists are giving it credence. It's very elegant because it doesn't change the laws of quantum mechanics in any way, nor does it add anything to it. And I think that's its primary attraction. You know, on the downside, it is so extravagant that according, you know, we've got all these different branches, all these different U's and V's, uh, seeing pointers up, pointers down, and every single possibility is happening. Uh, so some people don't like it for that yeah, reason. I, I can understand. It seems you know, wildly absurd, but you know, reality is not what I think. Right. <laughs> So the other, and then the other is this, there are different types of realistic collapse uh, theories which which change the dynamics, the quantum theory to some extent. And so if you think about it, you think, well, what's the difference? What's a, what's another difference between uh, a big thing and a small thing? Well, it's not just that the big thing is the thing that was seen by you the way Bohr thought, but it's also that the big thing is big. 
Oh. And so you could change the theory so that it, uh, it co collapses to one possibility rather than the other, depending on how many particles are in the system or how heavy the system is or, or some, in some way like that. And then the third way is due to uh, David Bohm in 1952, and it's this way of thinking that the quantum uh, theory is incomplete. And so what he proposes is that you add not just this quantum state, which is evolving through time, but also particles, where you can update the theory and posit uh, fields. And so there's two things in the world then. There's the quantum uh, wave function, the quantum state, plus the Bohmian particles or fields. And what interests me about them, I, I think that theory hasn't uh, doesn't get the press the other two do <laughs> as much. Uh, it's interesting. I mean, it reproduces all of the experimental predictions of quantum mechanics. So you can't tell the difference between it and quantum mechanics. But what interests me about it is that you could then use that new physics, which is being posited. And as you're trying to make sense of the universe and more, you know, with more and more physics as physics is progressing, it's a kind of a possible guide forward. And, you know, it could be false and it might not, it might lead you the wrong way, but it's at least worth, worth a shot, I think.